Hey everyone, so I thought I'd do a simple example today on the bind function. Uh, I'm revisiting it because uh, this came up today as part of one of the classes I was teaching for um, one of my students. And I originally recorded a video on the bind function, but um, you know, coming back to it again when I was teaching it, I had a little bit more appreciation and I also thought that I could kind of dive deeper with this video and really kind of explain what exactly is going on with bind and then of course you know some of the other concepts too with closure. So this video is a little bit more advanced. Uh, if you feel like you don't understand the basic concepts that are going on here like objects and um, using event listeners I do recommend going backwards and checking out some of the other videos. However this one is for um, those who want to be a little brave and learn a little bit more about how the bind function actually works in JavaScript. So here I've got a simple button with an ID of test and then I have a button object in my script tag here and this code is actually based off of Secrets of the JavaScript Ninja which is a very good book so I'm just going to preface that um, and I felt like rather than just reading the book you know like um, it'd be better to kind of explain some of the concepts because it's a very good book, but some of the concepts can be pretty difficult. So I've got, um, you know, this button object here, and it has two properties. It has clicked false, and then of course a click method. And when we use this method, it sets the value of its own clicked to true. Um, however, um, that's not always the case, and I am going to prove this to myself by console logging the value of the button. Um, after uh, I have attached it to an event listener here. So down here, I am basically just grabbing this button, HTML button here, and I am adding an event listener to it. I've renamed it to LM, and then I'm saying on click, I want to use this button objects click method here. So uh, let's go ahead and also add this here, just so we can prove to ourselves what is the actual value of this? So uh, for those of you who might be a little confused, uh, know, remember that you can always define event listeners by adding your own anonymous function here, and then you could do some stuff, do stuff. However, I've chosen to use a different function, which is button.click, which comes from here. OK, so saving that, I'm going to refresh this page. And then I'm going to inspect over here, and let's make this also gigantic so that you guys can see it. And of course, I'm going to bring my console here. So I'm going to click the button, and by default, I get two things back. I get object clicked false, and then this is equal to a button HTML object. So let me ask you real quick, do you expect that? Number one. The button object here still has clicked property false, even though when we click, it should have been turned to true. So looking down here, are we actually calling the button object on our click and setting the value of clicked false to clicked true? Or are we calling the HTML button object and setting the value of that dot clicked to true and then of course the value of this is not really the button object but the button HTML object. So think about that for a second and then if you've got it then let's move on. So essentially what's going on here is that um, when I click you know this uh, HTML button here What's going on is that it's using this function here, but it's setting the value of clicked to be true on the HTML button, as opposed to my object. So the context here for this is incorrect. Okay, so why is this happening? Essentially, it's because when we call this function here, 
this points to the LM. If you remember, because LM is also an object too, like this. It's an HTML object, but when we call this method button.click, it sets the value of this to actually LM. So if we wanted to change this to be the right correct uh, instance, we could just say that, oh, the instance is actually button. And uh, this time, of course, we refresh here. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to click the button. So now you can see object is still, object is now true. So our button object here got set to true. However, we're still seeing that the value of this is the HTML button, not the button object. So I know this example is confusing because of all the different buttons, but bear with me. Button object different from HTML button. That's all you have to kind of remember. So the long and short of this is that our value, when we say this dot clicked, is actually being set to the HTML element and not our original button object. So we could have these workarounds. You just have to remember, okay, I guess, um, to get the right context and make it always be the case that we're clicking the right thing. I could always just say, oh, whenever clicked happens, call the button, not the HTML button. That way that this value doesn't get overwritten. But in some cases, you don't want to be doing this. You know, like you would rather just use the built-in native this, especially considering this would be hard coding. You know, you want your code to be pretty flexible. So we can get around that by using a bind function. So let's take a look at the bind function. And this is also code straight up from Secrets of the JavaScript Ninja. Um, but essentially, what you would want to do is you want, oh, let's go ahead and lowercase that. You want to call a function called bind. And let's go ahead and define it. And so it's going to take two things here. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to return a function so that we can use that new function in the place of button.click. But the other thing it's got to do is it's got to set the context so that it's the correct context of this and not something else. So uh, we would need to take in a context and we'd need to take in a name. So the context is going to be, you know, the thing that we want to set this to. So in our case, it would be the button. And then of course, the name would be the actual property name, the click that we want to bind. So I'm just going to continue writing this code and I'll explain it. Okay, so essentially here, um, I'm basically saying that uh, anytime I bind a function, so any kind of like function from here, like this button.click, that's a function that I have right now, but the context is getting incorrect, I'm going to use this bind function to set the, this value to have the correct context. So then uh, instead of it being HTML button, it would be like the button object. So I would set the context by saying first, I'm going to return an anonymous function that's going to take the place of this function here. And then inside this function, um, I'm going to return uh, basically a function call. So anytime you see apply or dot call, think the same thing as this. It's basically like uh, button dot click with parentheses. That's all you got to really remember that you're just basically calling the function anytime you see the apply or the call method. Um, the apply method takes an array as arguments after, you know, uh, the function call. And then of course, call takes uh, comma separated arguments. But 
you can check out the other video on apply and call if you're not very um, confident in that and I'd be happy to talk about it again in a future video too. Essentially though just remember that it just calls this function. So what are we calling? We're saying bind. So we're gonna bind here our button dot click function and we're gonna return a new function. So this is our original function right here and right now this is wrong so we're going to bind so that we get the correct value of this to be button object and we're going to say button object is now the context so that's the first value here in fact I need to comma separate this so um, button is our context which is this button object and then a name is the method we want which is click so then I'm going to say button and then if you've never seen these before basically button and then array format the name of the method is basically the same as saying button dot click or button click these are basically the same thing no oh, actually I need to put these in quotes though so they're virtually identical okay so that plus our parentheses calls this function and then of course with the apply function if you remember from our previous video the apply function takes the original context and then sets the value of this to be that new context so in this case when I use the apply function that's the other special property there are four ways to declare this so if you use the apply function um, it will set the value of button to be this in this case because this will be basically button click and then apply button and any arguments at this point we don't have any arguments and arguments would just come from here arguments remember is a special keyword for extra stuff that um, comes in your function call so coming back to here let's first console log what a bind looks like so we'll just do that here too and let's see here oh the other thing I need to do is make this um, a string because otherwise this will just be uh, the wrong thing so it will think of it as a variable and we want it to actually use the method click so uh, let's go ahead and just I'm gonna save for now refresh and if you look uh, I have from line 18 it says console log bind button button click so if I come back to console you'll look and see that actually this is returning me a function right just like I wanted return a function and it's basically returning the same definition I have here um, so uh, I'm gonna save this in a variable here I'll just call this um, binded func and I'm gonna just say binded func and I'm just gonna call it like that so we'll refresh and it'll say cannot find undefined uh, property a click of undefined okay let's see why uh, essentially oh because I'm calling it before the the button has actually been declared so let's move this up real quick so save that refresh okay there you go so binded func basically now that the button object has been declared and I've bound this button click to my binded func here essentially this returns back a function and this function here remembers that I was trying to call button click and when I call it here it sets the value of clicked to now be set of false to true and then of course it also shows me that this is the button you notice that it's not the HTML object anymore it's now become the object itself the button object that's what we wanted the correct context 
So sets the correct context. I hope you got that. Uh, if it's not clear, uh, one more time, the issue we were having earlier is that when we were calling this method here without the bind, uh, when we were just calling button.click, it was calling this method here, but it was setting the value of dot clicked to be on this button right here, HTML button. However, that was incorrect. When we console logged button and this, this was the HTML button, and that was not what we wanted. We wanted to set the value of this to be uh, true for our button object, not our HTML button. And you may ask me, like, well, what's the point of this? Why would I need to do any of this? Well, let's just say, you know, um, you were trying to keep track of how many times buttons were being clicked on your page. You would want to update that on an object, not so much an HTML object, because the HTML object is for HTML. This is for your own programming code. So um, in an earlier video, I talked about keeping score so, you know, you want to use objects to keep track of score, um, not like actual DOM elements. That doesn't make any sense. So the binded func basically sets the correct context because of this logic here. It's essentially saying, hey, look, um, I know that I have a button object somewhere, um, and I want to use its method click, um, and I have to make this a string. And uh, once I bind these two things together, I want to return a new function that will take the place of the original function, but the new function has the correct context because we're using the actual button object followed by its property, calling it, and then using the apply method to set the correct context. Remember, apply sets the context of this, um, and that's one of the four ways to declare this in JavaScript. So the bind returns a anonymous function with the correct context set. So if I take all this out here now, I'll just comment it. And I save and I refresh here. If I click this button now, now you can see that the button object actually gets set to the correct context. And I am no longer calling the HTML object. I am basically now looking at this and I don't have to actually hard code this to be button. I can just work with what I have and I don't have to worry like all is well. <laughs> uh, this is now set to the correct context. So I hope uh, this example explains bind and uh, if it's confusing leave me a comment um, but I think that for the most part you should probably be able to get it now just kind of like Look at it, you know, like one more time. Try to like make sense of everything that's going on here and also try out this code yourself. Um, you know, start out with simply like creating an object and then also create like a simple HTML object. And you know, you can, you don't have to use button. You can use like div you can, for here. And then this could be, you know, something else. It could be, this could be button and this could be div if it's confusing. But essentially you want to grab whatever by ID set a click event listener to it and then try running you know your objects method and if it doesn't work then you want to bind the correct context and remember all you're doing when you're binding is just grabbing the name of your object followed by its method passing it here and returning it using the apply function and then of course that will set the correct context because you have you're passing it in you're correct you're saying hey I want button to be the actual this value as opposed to whatever else um, you know like I don't want it to be an HTML object 